hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is tessie and today we are going to be recreating this corset top if you are yet to subscribe to the channel please do that and let's get right into the video so guys i folded my pattern into two from the starting point i took my shoulder measurements divided by two then i came down to the chest line bust point on the bust half length and my bust so what i'm doing next is to chalk how deep i want my off shoulder to be so you know it's an off shoulder top so i'm coming down to like seven inches so i'm going to be chalking seven inches so you determine how off you want it to be so i chalked seven inches and connected it into a straight line next thing is to take the nipple to nipple measurement divided by two plus half inch so my nipple to nipple divided by two plus half inch is four inches so i connected it into a straight line so on the underboss, I'm going to be taking my darts. For this tutorial, I'm going to be making use of one and a half inches for both sides. So I took 1.5 at this point and also 1.5 at this other point. I went ahead to connect it into a straight line. Then connected it to the boss point line, coming down by like half inch to eliminate pointiness. So what I'll do next is I'll be coming in by one inch on both sides. That's on the chest line. I'll come in by one inch on both sides. So on this side of the pattern, I came in by one. And on this other side, I came in by one. So I'll connect it all the way down to the boss point line using my curve ruler. So what I'm doing next is at the chest line area, I'll be coming down by like 1.5 inches. So you determine how deep you want that area to be. So I came down by 1.5 inch. And from that point, I came in by half an inch. Then I connected it together. Then from that point, I connected it to the bust point line. Then from the bust point line, I'll connect to the under bust using my curve ruler. You could use your free hand. Anyone that works for you is fine. So guys, after connecting my point, what I'll do next is to give it a sweetheart effect all the way down here. So I'm just going to use my free hand to curve it in. So guys, for this other side of the pattern, I'll check the difference between the boss point and the under boss. So the difference between the boss point and the under boss is 2.5. I'll add half inch to it, which is three inches. The reason why I'm adding half inch to it is because the bust is fuller on this side than on this other side. Hope you understand. So I have 2.5 plus half inch, that's three. So I'm going to chalk my three inches at that point. And then I'm going to be connecting. I'll use my curve ruler to connect the point to the chest line and from the chest line to the under bust. So from this point, I'm just going to blend it in. So I'll blend it into the armhole. Then I'll label this as my cup one and this as my cup two. Then I'm just going to put the arrow to indicate the joining parts. Hope you understand. So I'll go ahead now to take out the areas I'll be taking off. So guys, after taking out the areas I'll be taking up, I'll be inserting my measurements, replacing back the dart, and adding my allowance. So at the chest line, I placed my bust divided by 4. I replaced back the dart I took. And I also added 2 inches for my sewing allowance. On the underbust as well, I placed my underbust divided by 4. Replaced back the dart and I added 2 inches. I did the same thing for the half length as well. After doing all of that, I'll go ahead now to connect my points. So guys, after doing that, the next thing is to give it a bust effect. So from the waistline, I'm just going to close the dart leg. So I'm closing my dart leg as you can see. After closing the dart leg, from the waistline, I'm just going to slant it all the way down to the end of the pattern. So after slanting, we are good to go. So this is what the front pattern looks like. I indicated the boss point line and I indicated up and down so that we don't get confused. So I'll go ahead now to cut out my pattern. So guys, I'm going to be using the front to cut out the back before cutting out the cup, if we understand. So what I'll do is place the center front on the side. I'm just going to close the dart this way. Go ahead, close your darts 
use your sell tape or your paper tape to hold it in place for now. So just go ahead now to hold the paper together using your sell tape. And after doing that, we need to take note that the bass effect is only going to be on the front part of the dress. The back is going to stop at the waistline as the half length. So I'm just going to fold the bass effect in. After folding it in, I will introduce a new pattern paper for the back. So in case you are adding a zipper to yours, go ahead, chop your zip allowance area before placing the front. But I will be adding loop to mine, so I don't need my zip allowance. So I'm going to place the front on the back this way. So after placing it this way, I will just go ahead now to trace what I have there. So go ahead, trace what you have and then make the lines visible. So we are good to okay, for the So guys, for the back, I don't want the neckline of the back straight. So I'm going to come down to one inch and then I'll connect it using my curve ruler. So you can choose to leave yours straight. It all depends on how you want the back to look like. So after connecting my lines, for the loop, I'm going to be taking some inches off. So I just choose to take 1.5 inches off. So I chopped 1.5 inches and connected it into a straight line. Then I'm going to be taking the areas I'll be taking off. After taking out the areas, my loop is just going to be on this side of the pattern. Hope you understand. So I'll go ahead now to cut out my pattern. Then we are good to go. I'll label this as my back. And we are going to be cutting two. So for the front, I'll go ahead now to cut out the cups. So hope you understand. So we are good to go with the front and the back pattern. This is what it looks like. What I'll be doing next is cutting my fabric for both the front and the back. So guys, after cutting out my fabric, this is what it looks like. I'm going to be using this Ankara print for it. And as you can see, I left some inches for sewing allowance, half inch all around for sewing allowance. And I've gone ahead to cut out my lining piece as well. So guys, I added paper stay on the fabric and I also added paper stay on the curves and on the lining as you can see so what i'll do is join my center front and the sides together so i'll place them right side facing each other then i'm going to be stitching using half inch i'll do the same thing for this other side as well then for my curves i added half inch all around as you can see then I also added paper stay on the cups and I labeled my cups. So for a beginner, go ahead, label your cup up and down one, up and down one for the first one. And for the second one as well, label it up and down two, two. Hope you understand. So the reason why I did this is for us not to get confused. So now we are going to be joining the cups together. So we are going to be joining cup one and cup two together. So I'm going to take the cup one. And join it with the cup to where I have my notches. So I'll place them stitch using half inch and I'll do the same thing for this as well. I'll place them together and stitch using half inch. After stitching, so guys, after stitching, this is what it looks like and I've ironed. So I'm going to be adding a already made cup to it. So I'm just going to fold it into two and then stitch here a bit. That's the down part a bit. I do this because it makes my cup sit well. So I'm just going to fold the second one stitch and show us what it looks like. So this is it. So what I'll do next is to join the already made cup to the fabric. I'm going to place it in this way, pin it down and then stitch all the way around. You do the same thing for the other cup as well. I'm going to pin it down and stitch all the way around. So guys, for the bias, you can choose to add your bias on the dress. That's on the front side of the dress. It all depends on your preference, but I want to add mine at the back. So I'm just going to use my bias to form my casing for the boning. Then I'll place it in this way and then stitch the side together. So go ahead, cut your bias and place it in any direction that you want. After adding my bias to it, this is what it looks like as you can see. So guys, what I'll be doing next is adding my cup. I'm going to place it this way. And then place it together, then stitch using half inch, and I'll do the same thing for this cup as well. 
so guys after adding the cup this is what it looks like as you can see the next thing i'll be doing is adding my bone into it so go ahead cut out your boning and then make sure to file the edges of the boning or use your sellotape to hold the edges then insert your boning into the boning case so i'll go ahead to do that quickly and after doing that give it a very good press so guys i've gone ahead to join the lining piece as well so i'm going to place the lining and the main fabric right side facing each other then stitch the top part and stitch the down part and turn it inside out so after stitching this is what it looks like i'm going to be notching the down part of the dress and also notch the top part of it then after doing that i'll open it from the sides then i'll give it a very good press so guys after ironing this is what it looks like for the front now we'll be working for the back for the back i've gone ahead to take my dart i've stitched the dart in so i'm going to be adding my loop to it i'm going to be using my bias i've used my bias to make my rope what i'll do is chalk where i want the loop to be so go ahead chalk wherever you want your loop to be you do the same thing for the second side as well so guys please do not forget to add your boning to the back i don't have enough boning at home at the moment so i just decided to make the video like that so after cutting out the loop what i'll be doing next is folding it into two then placing it on the side that i chalked then i'll be stitching i'll do the same thing for this part as well after stitching this is it as you can see i'll place the lining right side facing each other then stitch the top part, the side, the down part, and then I'll turn it inside out. I'll do the same thing for this side as well. I'm going to stitch it and then turn it out. So guys, after stitching, this is what it looks like. Give it a good press. Then you place the back and the front together. Then you shape. Make sure when shaping, snatch the waist. If your waist is 26, make it 24 when shaping. Hope you understand. So that's what I did there so guys the next thing is to cut out the sleeve so for the sleeve i have two pieces as you can see and the length of the sleeve is what i have here is 13 and a half inches then the wideness is 45 inches so i'll go ahead now to fold the down part of the sleeve because i'm going to be adding elastic to it and i'll also fold the top part of the sleeve i'll do the same thing for both sleeve after folding and adding my elastic to it this is what it looks like so what i'll do next is to add my sleeve to the corset top so what i'll do is take the sleeve the part that i stitched that's the joint the joining part of the sleeve i'm going to add it to the joining part of the top Place it this way, right side facing each other. Then stitch at that top part and also stitch at this side to hold it in place. I'll do the same thing for this other sleeve as well. I'll place it and then stitch and show us the end result. Guys, this is what the dress looks like. And this is the back view. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel like this video drop a comment and also follow me on facebook tiktok and instagram at so with i'll see you in my next video for now bye